It is time, prompt number 157. We're gonna draw the ant on the spine because I've drawn none. This is gonna be awkward, but we can do it. Not the best ant, not the worst ant. All right, let's see what our prompts are. We have, boop, we've got four. Needle on a haystack, interesting. I mean, would you even see it? Anyway, a uh, picnic basket. We have fireplace and bottle of poison. Ooh, okay, interesting. Let's, let's sketch. <laughs> I really need to start voicing over the sketch part as soon as I record it because let me tell you when I recorded this intro bit and the sketching, November 15th, that's right. The year currently is 2024. We're in September. This is not November. I intro this video on November 15th, 2023. It has been almost a year again since I did my last prompt. Okay, you know what? The problem here isn't that I need to voice over the bit as soon as I do it. It's the fact that I need to finish the prompt within the week of recording it. Okay, but let's just look at these prompts. These are a rough four words. Needle in a haystack already makes this a tougher illustration because what the heck? A needle in a haystack? Picnic basket, fireplace, and bottle of poison. I feel like I could work with, you know, we've got some witchy stuff. A bottle of poison is very fun, mythical, mystical. What's going on there? So I sketched each of these items and I really tried to start brainstorming how I could combine all of them. And I was kind of going for a needle in a haystack monster situation. Situation. You guys know how I do. I like to try to make this as fun as creative as possible instead of just the items being the items. And that's exactly why the process of this prompt has taken me so long because let's move on to the rehashing sketching of this prompt. I was really stuck on this one, you guys. This digital sketch you see of me trying to come up with a more finalized, better illustration. This was done on a live stream in May of this year. May 17th. Again, um, right now it is September. <laughs> So in May, I was missing the prompts. And let me tell you, it's not that I forgot about the prompts between November and now. It's the fact that every time I wanted to work on the prompt, I would open the book and see, you know, remind myself that the prompts were needle in a haystack, fireplace, picnic basket, and bottle of poison. And I would just immediately be overwhelmed and discouraged and work on something else. I will admit I haven't been in the most creative mood recently, but I really do want to get through this book. Even even if zero subscribers are watching my content, I, I gotta finish this thing. We, we gotta get through this book, you guys. So on stream, I sketched a few ideas of where I wanted to go with this illustration. As you can see, the haystack monster was in all of them. I really wanted a fireplace that was a little bit more creative. And to be honest, a lot of these items are just so random that I just made a silly, goofy scene of what, I'm not really sure. What I'm going with is maybe some sort of witch has made a little place to hang out and work on potions. Her familiar cat is taking over while she goes out and collects stuff and a haystack of hers has come alive. Maybe a potion was spilled on it. Part of the fun of these prompts is to come up with a story and even though this just looks like a random who knows what happening in a field somewhere, you know I'm gonna make a story about it. So once I had a sketch I was somewhat happy with, it was time to move that sketch onto a physical piece of paper as you are familiar with, I suppose, if you are watching all of the prompts, I have been really into digital art lately, especially when it comes to sketching. I really don't carry a physical sketchbook anymore. I just love the cleanness of an iPad. You don't get pens everywhere. There's not pencil smudging. It's easy to erase. You've got layers. So I did all of my sketching digitally, but I did want to create this with watercolor. So I used my iPad to trace my sketch onto a piece of paper. Super easy, I love this process. 
another reason why I love my iPad. Speaking of iPad, like I said, I've been doing a lot of digital art lately, like a lot, a lot of digital art. I've got my comic sketch scouts I've been working on for the past several months. I'm super obsessed with it, all digital. And I've really just sort of kind of been neglecting my watercolor skills or just in general my physical art skills, especially watercolor and line work. I really feel like my, my pen work and my watercolors are quite rusty. So going into this piece, I was very, very nervous, but I do feel like I especially need to get back into the prompts to really get myself re-familiar with my skills of working more traditionally. The whole reason why I started this prompt book is because I wanted to force myself to draw when I wasn't feeling creative, which it seems to have turned on me. But I do want to keep my watercolor and inking skills up, even though it's not my main medium right now. I go through phases. I can see myself going back to it and I don't want it to be something that I forget how to use. So we're going back into it. I do feel like this isn't my best piece and I do feel that way every time I come back to watercolor after it's been a while. However, I like this piece okay. <laughs> I don't hate it, which is good. I am always so, 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 so nervous when I take a huge break from watercolor and then I come back and I have to put down permanent ink. It is absolutely horrifying. And I think the lack of confidence also just makes the whole process even worse. I really like cold press watercolor paper, which is a textured watercolor paper. And now that my confidence is so low when it comes to inking, I work a lot slower. And when it comes to textured paper, the slower you go, the more those grooves and indentions and textures guide your line to go not where you want it to go. The more confidence you have, the faster you work and the less those grooves will influence your lines. So I was really nervous going into the line work, but you know what? I don't think it turned out too bad. So immediately when it came to coloring this piece, like I said, I sketched this back in May. May is spring, I think. So I think originally I was thinking about a forest with green grass. However, now that it's fall, I've got brown, red, yellow on the mind, you know, fall colors. And I really like that because the haystack is going to be yellow. The trees are going to be brown. And you know what? The grass is also going to be brown. So now I have a very cohesive single color vibe for this illustration. And you guys know that I like like to limit my color palettes when it comes to illustrations. So keeping it warm and brown made choosing colors very easy. Or did it make choosing colors too easy because now everything's brown and yellow and it all mixes together. <laughs> It's not that bad, but I've also always struggled with my illustrations sort of blending in together. It's something that I've always been working on, especially when it comes to limiting your color palette because that's when things start to become the same. Thankfully, there aren't that many different elements to this illustration. We have our haystack, we have a couple of tree trunks, and we have the grass. Everything else is pretty black and white. I really like to stylize bottles with this dark, pure, black blobby ink inside of it. I don't know what it is. It's fun. I seem to incorporate a lot of black, inky, goopy creatures and elements into my art. Our kitty is a solid black color, so it definitely pops off of that white background. Now, I guess the question is, why did I decide to frame this illustration the way that I did? Well, backgrounds are hard. And who wants to practice backgrounds, right? Joking aside, I do try to crop my illustrations in a way that is also interesting that isn't just the illustration on the page. Creating a little sort of stage highlight of grass around our illustration I think is fun. Could this piece have used more of a background? Maybe some rolling hills, a few trees? Yeah, probably. But I do want to focus on our scene here. At this point in the coloring, I was also feeling like things were just a little bit too brown and uninteresting. I was starting to paint the fire and I realized, hey, there's a lot of bright red over here and there is no bright red anywhere else. Now I haven't talked about our needle in the haystack. We have a cat stabbing the haystack monster with a giant needle. So there is our needle in the haystack. And I didn't originally think about putting blood, but because the red of the fire was just so lonely, I felt like we needed some red somewhere else in the illustration. We needed some pop. We needed some color and pizzazz. We, we needed blood splatters. We, we just needed blood splatters. It's a Casey video. We need blood splatters. 
I'm Casey Golden. Of course I put blood splatters on my art. Oh God, TikTok. Okay, so I inked some final details and our first prompt in a very long time is done. I really do want to get back into the prompts. I'm hoping, I say this every video, you know what? A prompt will be here when it is here, but you know what? You can still join in. Hashtag Casey the prompt on Twitter to join in. And if you're going to be using Instagram, please use hashtag Casey the prompt followed by this prompts number. So this will be 157. For some reason, Instagram doesn't let you sort hashtags by date anymore. So it's really hard for me to find new submissions. On the screen, you will notice some amazing entries from our last prompt brain and rock. Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.